Let's take a look at maximums and minimums on an interval. First, I'm going to need some definitions. The definitions of maximum and minimum. So let's suppose I have a function f. Let's say f has a maximum on a region. The maximum will be y0 equal to f of x0. f has to be defined at x0. And so we'll have a maximum if that y0 is bigger than the value of f for any other point in our region. So we write that numerically as y0 bigger than or equal to f of x for any x in your region. Okay, a key point here to be a maximum, there has to be a point x0 where f of x0 actually hits y0. Now, we'll also have a definition for a minimum. Same idea, except we just change the inequality. Here, we'll have our y0, all of the f of x in our region are going to be bigger than y0 for the x that we care about. Now, let's take a look at our rule. We're going to have the extreme value theorem, which says, if I have a closed interval a, b, I have a function f, which is continuous, then we're going to have a maximum and a minimum for our function f on a, b. So note, this just isn't saying there's a biggest point and the smallest point. There's going to be actual points x where if I hit those points with f, we hit our maximum and minimum values. First example, f of x equal to x cubed minus 3x on the interval minus 1 and a half to 1 and a half. Here, we'll have a maximum at x equal to minus 1 with value equal to f of minus 1 equals 2. For the minimum, that'll happen at x equal to 1 with value f of 1 equal to minus 2. So if you look at the graph, that's just going to be this maximum peaked up there, minimum bottom of the trough there. All right, let's continue. So how about we try f of x equal to x squared, but now I'm only going to put it on the open interval minus 1 to 1. So we don't have the endpoints here. So what's going to happen? We're going to have a minimum at x equals 0 of f of 0 equal to 0. But if I try to go for the maximum, you might think, well, if I put minus 1 and 1 in here, we're going to get a 1 out. We should have a maximum of 1. But the problem is no point in our region actually takes the value of 1. You can get as close as 1 as you want, but you never actually get there. So we're left saying, because of our definition, that we have no maximum. All right, more typical for not having a maximum is something like our next example. So here I would take f of x equal to 1 over x on the interval 0 to 1. We leave out 0, but I put back in the 1. I have a minimum here at x equal to 1. Okay, so f of 1 is equal to 1 there. Then we see on the graph, well, what's going to happen? As I go into 0, this thing's just going to get large without bound. So I can't have a maximum. There's not going to be a number which sits above every value of my function. So there, no maximum. Looking at our case where we had a maximum and a minimum, we're led to the following definition. x0 is going to be called a critical point of f if I'm going to take the derivative of f, apply it to x0, I get either equal to 0 or undefined. So let's take a look at what this means in terms of a graph. So, when the derivative is equal to zero, we have a horizontal tangent line. So the different ways we can have a horizontal tangent line are going to be a so. Either it looks like we have a minimum around x0, we're going to have a maximum around x0, or we're going to have neither. So in this case, what's happening is the function just comes up to x0, flattens out, and then keeps going in the same direction it was going before. So it could be increasing or going down and decreasing. But the idea is you're not going to get a bowl in either direction. So no max or min. How about if we're undefined? Well, in this case, typically the way we think of undefined, you either have your tangent line as a vertical line, or you're going to have a tangent line on each side, but the slopes won't agree. So in this case, again, typically three flavors. You're going to have a minimum near x0, a maximum near x0, or neither, your function comes up to x0 and then continues going on its way in the same direction. 
So this notion of having a max or min near x0, we're gonna call those points relative or local maximums or minimums. So these might not be maximums or minimums when you look at your entire graph, but if we just put a little circle around our point, will be the maximums and minimums in that case. So let's take a look. So for this function that I've drawn in here, you'll note, okay, well, we have a couple points where we have relative maximums. We'll have them at this peak, at this peak, and at this end point. So if I just put circles around those points, they definitely look like maximums for all the points that are nearby. For relative minimums, we'll have them at this point, this point, and this point. And note, again, you put a circle around, looks like you have minimums at each of those points near x, your x0. Now, if we look at the graph overall, well, we're only gonna get one minimum and one maximum here. You're gonna get the minimum at this end point, and then you're gonna get your maximum up on this point there. So, should be a little bit suggestive. If you know it, our maximum showed up at a critical point, our minimum showed up at an end point. So this is gonna lead us to a recipe for finding the points in the extreme value theorem. Okay, you'll note the extreme value theorem just said the maximums and minimums show up in your region. It doesn't tell you where they're gonna be. So our procedure is gonna be a so. We're gonna have F continuous on an interval. We're gonna assume it has its derivative at every point, except for maybe a few points. What are we gonna do? Take the derivative, find your critical points. So we wanna know where the derivative is zero or undefined. Once I have those points, I'm gonna apply f to those points and I'm gonna apply f to the end points. Once I have all those values, we compare and that's how you get your minimum and your maximum. Okay, you know that the minimum and maximum exist by the extreme value theorem. Let's look at some examples. First example, it's gonna be f of x equal to x squared minus four x on the interval minus one to three, including the endpoints. So extreme value theorem says we can attain our maximum and our minimum in this interval. So we wanna find those. So to start, I find the critical points. It's gonna take the derivative of my function, that's gonna be two x minus four, set it equal to zero or undefined, see what comes out. Okay, the only way I can get a critical point here is if 2x minus 4 equals 0 or x equals 2. I take that point, I take the endpoints, so I'm checking minus 1, 2, and 3. We apply f to those, and then we check the values that come out for the maximum and minimum. So in this case, we're going to have a maximum minus 1, value is going to be 5, and then our minimum is going to be at 2, value equal to minus 4. Since we have a parabola here, we can draw the graph. Its vertex is gonna be at two, and it's gonna be facing up. So it'll look like this. This checks our answer. On the left end point, we have the maximum. And then at the vertex, we have the minimum. If you want to go one more level in, you could ask about relative maximums or minimums. In this case, the relative maximums occur at the end points. So if that just means draw a circle around your point, that's gonna be the maximum inside that circle, and then our relative minimum is just gonna be the same as our minimum at two. Next example, let's consider the function f of x equal to two minus x to the one third on the interval minus one to eight. So first I wanna find the critical points, so I take the derivative. Derivative is gonna be minus one third comes down, and then we have x to the minus two thirds. We take one off the exponent. Now, I want that equal to either zero or undefined, so I need to clean that up first to see what's happening. So I have minus one third, the x to the minus two thirds. To get rid of the minus sign, I rewrite that as one over x to the two thirds. And then if I was actually gonna put numbers in here, I would write it as one over x to the one third, whole quantity squared. So you do your cube root first before you do your square. Now, the only way that I can get zero or undefined is if the denominator is equal to zero, and then I'll get undefined. So we're gonna have a critical point at x equals zero of type undefined. So we would expect a corner or a vertical tangent line at that point. Take that point, we're gonna take our endpoints, then we'll apply f to each of those and see what values come out. 
compare them, and that's how I get my max and mins. So if I put minus one, eight, and zero into my function, what comes out? Okay, well, if I put minus one in, minus one cubed is gonna be equal to minus one. Just remember, if I take minus one and cube it, minus one comes out. So you're just rewriting that in a different way. Minus one cubed equals minus one, same as saying cube root of minus one equals minus one. So we're gonna get a three. If I put zero in, I'm gonna get two. If I put eight in, same idea. If I have eight to the one third, that's gonna be equal to two. Same as saying two cubed equals eight. It's just the language trick. So there the value that comes out is gonna be zero. Comparing our values, we're gonna have a minimum at zero and a maximum at three. Now, how about local max and mins? Well, this will be a local max and this will still be a local min. What's gonna happen at zero? If I put a little circle around that, you'll notice we're getting neither. This thing is gonna be decreasing down to zero and that's just gonna keep decreasing once it goes past. So neither a max or min of relative type there. 